a few very critical steps. Number one, just yesterday, uh, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, uh, released, of course, uh, its new uh, directive as it relates uh, to uh, the new service-based tariff regime. Uh, this, in, in, in some few quarters, has been mistaken as cost-reflective tariff. In the past, what you had was cost-reflective tariff, which, in, in effect, the regulator would come out and, uh, as a blanket, give all Nigerians a tariff increase set with the with the rationale that uh, you know that you, the, the the distribution companies for example need more revenues to invest in their infrastructure to, to provide better service therefore everybody should pay more that is what the cost reflective tariff was yesterday what the president uh, has, has uh, the president uh, has directed and of course uh, what the Nigerian electricity regulatory commission uh, has put forward now is a new service based uh, tariff regime which is tied to to the, to the availability of power supply and the, uh, the, the delivery of service by the discos. Now, in specific terms, what does it mean? Customers are going to be consulted and communicated by the distribution companies on the level of service uh, that is going to be uh, provided to them based on uh, the hours uh, available, of, uh, the hours of supply available to them uh, in their areas. Secondly, customers are going to have to be metered. Now, the issue is, if there was previously a directive that customers should be metered, what is the difference now? The difference now is, of course, that uh, the, 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 the presidential administration has put in place a new fund by the central Bank of Nigeria of about $200 million that is going to be uh, used for the bulk procurement of, of meters across the country to address the shortfall which exists of approximately uh, 5 to 6 million meters. If we get 5 to 6 million meters in the country, we're going to be able to ensure that all Nigerians that want a meter can get a meter, which means that the estimated billing will be gone. So that money is in place, that process of procurement is in place, and the President has also uh, uh, directed that there will be a one-year waiver on import duties on meters to ensure that there's okay. no encumbrance to um, the metering of our people. And then the last point I want to make very important is that the issue of estimated billing, even in the interim, before all of the meters arrive, is dealt with within this regulation because we have now put a capping regulation, which means that no distribution company will be able to charge any Nigerian who is on meter uh, a, a, a bill that is, is more than what those who are metered are receiving, which is very, very critical because before there was arbitrary billing where they could charge any amount of money. That is no longer the case. So not only are all of our people going to be metered, but in the interim period before they're metered, we have put a hard cap on the ability of, 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 of distribution companies to charge. And so then the, the, on the issue of hours per, of supply, it is the gap, we, the, 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 the clear statement is that anybody in this country who is receiving less than 12 hours of power supply in a day they will not see a, a COBO increase in their tariff. Okay. The, the distribution companies are, 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 are they are not allowed uh, by charge, this directive yeah. to charge anything more than the current uh, tariff uh, on anybody receiving less than 12 hours. But if you're receiving more than 12 hours in a day, which some industries and metered customers in the country are, those individuals will, of course, uh, see uh, a tariff increase according to the needs of the distribution companies based on the service delivered. All right, thank you very much. If you're just joining us, the program is have your say and today our guest is the senior special assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on public affairs Mr. Ajoe Ingalale. Don't forget you can join us um, with the phone line 0807 6776771. We'll be going for a short break. Stay with us. Radio Nigeria uplifting the people and uniting the nation. The National Center for Disease Control has informed me that a large proportion of new infections are now occurring in our communities through person-to-person -person contacts. So we must pay attention to the danger of close contact between person-to-person. -person. At this point, I will remind all Nigerians to continue to take responsibility for the recommended measures to prevent transmission, including maintaining physical distancing, good personal hygiene, and staying at home.
was brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Radio Nigeria, uplifting the people and uniting the nation. Yes, indeed, the program is Have Your Say, coming to you live on the network service of Radio Nigeria. And today we're looking at the achievements of the present administration of President Muhammad Buhari so far. And our guest to throw light on these achievements is the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Public Affairs, Mr. Ajuri Ingalale. And the lines are open now for Nigerians to be part of the conversation, like uh, we announced just before the break. The line to call is 0807 6226771. Once again, the line to call to be part of the conversation 0807 6226771. You can also get through to us to um, that's for WhatsApp and SMS only. Send to 0705 864 2473. Once again, 0705 864 2473. We have a first caller. Hello, tell us who you are. Where are you calling from? The presenter, my name is Emmanuel. I'm calling you from my Tama Abuja. All right, go ahead, Emmanuel. Good morning, the guests at the program. How are you, sir? Good morning to you, my dear brother. Uh, by God's grace, I'm doing well. Thank you. Okay, I always like calling when you are featuring because I believe you will understand most of the things I will talk about. One, I want to plead with your administration that we put structure in place for any other thing, mostly on humanitarian. You know what I'm talking about, social welfare scheme. Mm. Different from humanitarian group who only operate from Abuja. We don't have structure in the local council. We don't have them in the state. They should be carried along mm. security-wise, education-wise, job-wise. What do I mean by job-wise? We should strengthen the system like Ministry of Labor and Employment. They should be asked to do the need to do the work, grassroots, to the to, to, to the council area. You understand where I'm coming from? Over there, people do people are just gotten to throw council. But these days the state has abandoned the market. The council is not functioning. Then whether while the whole load is on the federal, where only maybe few individuals will be saddled with a whole lot of over 200 million people uh, 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 scheduled. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Then Thank I you. I want also to plead on ele- election. With COVID-19 experience, can we reduce our physical electionary, like campaign, to jingle on radio and television while Nigerians are made to vote electronically? We can't do that. It's possible. Is done everywhere. Mm. Thank right. you very much, my uh, brother. Thank you, Emmanuel. Yes, yes uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dalali uh, wants to react. Uh, indeed. Uh, let me just uh, thank my brother Emmanuel for uh, his contribution. It, it means a lot to me that our people are attentive to the issues uh, and care enough to be uh, listening in and uh, participating in the conversation. Uh, first of all, let's deal with the, the first issue, which is very relevant, which uh, he mentioned, uh, which is about uh, how do we strengthen uh, the base of our political system and the base of our society when we talk about uh, the wards uh, and uh, councils uh, across this country, local government areas across the country. I, I think it's important to note uh, that unlike uh, individuals who have been running for president promising to restructure the country even though they did not restructure the country when they were in power, President Muhammadu Buhari uh, is not a man of words, but a man of action. And so uh, you would recall that uh, immediately President Muhammadu Buhari was within a few days, I think it was within 48 hours in fact, 
uh, the president uh, put in place um, the new guidelines under the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU, uh, that essentially uh, stipulated and provided uh, for the realization of the yearnings of Nigerians over the last 20 years, that state governors should not be controlling the purse strings of local government uh, uh, accounts in this country anymore. We have seen, of course, local government administrations suffer uh, tremendously as a result of that uh, deleterious practice over the, over the last two decades. The president put an end to that with that regulation. Now, for the first time, local governments are receiving funds directly from source uh, and all of that. That has uh, been established all across the country. And I think it's one of the most underreported achievements of this administration. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if you look at uh, even this year, uh, earlier this year, you recall that Executive Order Number 10 uh, was signed by the President, which has to do, of course, uh, with financial autonomy for uh, states, judiciary, and legislatures in, in, in uh, consolidation of the constitutional amendment uh, that was, uh, you, know, co co you know, completed over the course of the last uh, few years under this administration. Uh, that also, uh, when uh, fully realized, obviously the modalities and the implementation process is an ongoing process uh, because of the complexity of what is involved, uh, but one fully realized in short order very soon, uh, obviously that is going to have huge impact on the ability of state legislatures not to just do the bidding of state governors, uh, but to do, the, to do the bidding of the people who put them into office, which is of course the design uh, of this democratic dispensation. And then not to speak of state uh, judiciary's uh, financial autonomy. That has massive impact on the ability of state uh, judiciaries to be able to, uh, judicial institutions to be able to uh, carry out justice judgments that are not uh, favoring uh, the powerful and wealthy elite that provide them resources and vehicles and housing quarters and all of that, but rather in providing judgments on the basis of uh, the, the word and merit of the law. And that is very important for the, for the uplift of the common man in this country. You're talking about uh, electionary, which can be done online and so on. What do you think? What's the possibility? Well, uh, first of all, uh, it's... Including it, campaigns and voting yes, and so absolutely. on. There's absolutely. No, there's no doubt about the fact that, uh, you know, uh, electoral reforms are overdue in the country. The president is very much in agreement with that sentiment, and that is why he is leading the way uh, in, the, uh, in the ongoing electoral uh, amendment uh, process. Uh, you would uh, recall that in recent times, the, uh, the INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, has already uh, given its own framework, its own uh, kind of uh, preliminary uh, provisions, if you will, to uh, the relevant uh, authorities in the National Assembly to begin those consultations. Uh, the the executive branch is closely involved, uh, and I, uh, we can assure Nigerians uh, that well before, well before the 2023 general elections, they should expect uh, that President Mohamedou Buhari will deliver on an electoral act amendment that is favorable to Nigerians and okay. not favorable to uh, politicians who previously attempted to do an amendment that was more in their favor than in favor of the Nigerian people. The president stopped that, but he's going to put forward uh, an amendment that is going to favor our people. Okay. Now, let's take more calls. Um, hello, tell us who you are, where you're calling from, and go ahead. Hello? Hello, good morning. We can hear you if you're on the line. Hello? Hello? Okay. Yes, uh, let, let, uh, back to you now. Um, now, yes. let's look at security, and uh, security has been a major... Good morning, President. Okay, we have a call on the line. Hello? Good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Daniel. Uh, good yes, morning. We can hear you. Your name and location, please, and go ahead. My name is Nasser Wuseni Furubini Gwondi. I'm calling from Gosho, the Federal Affairs Department. Okay. Well, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I have to take the opportunity to salute our guest today. Good morning, sir. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for calling in. Good morning. Uh, please, you are talking perfectly, actually, in this, uh, your aspiration, Mr. President. So the problem there is that you used to bring this program hard here so that people are afraid of concern in this nation. But you know, even consider, if you come to this program, you will just go, I will not even see any progress. As soon as we want to use the word to salute and, and, and uh, call you to consider us through this video, please. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You are talking, yes, you are talking perfectly. What is, I'm suggesting, it seems that you started this program up to now. Please, and Mr. President, I promise this Nigeria that you will keep out the people more than 10 billion people out of poverty. But you know, even what is going on this time around. Please, we need to send this message for the office of Mr. President. This Nigeria, you are here in very, very high and poverty. All right, thank you. Consider us to know that Mr. President is a, is a 